So ladies and gentlemen, today we are in Dallas, Texas, and I am honored to have Mr. Eric Spigner here next to me in this super cool uh, gastro pub, which is a new term to me. And we're going to be talking today with Eric about his passion for what? Cooking. Cooking and food. food. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so first of all, Nova Gastro Pub. Mm -hmm. Explain what Gastro Pub is. Well, um, it started off in in England, as far as the terminology Gastro Pub, because you know the terminology pub comes from you know England, you know Scotland, you know Ireland. Well, it just means that uh, we're a place that serves drinks, but we also serve food that's kicked up a notch. You know, it's not your average bar fare. You know far as like your, your chips and dip and things of this nature you know we actually put a lot more work into our food so that's where the terminology gastro gastronomic yeah that's what it all comes from so what what kind of things are on the menu here oh wow man we do, uh, yeah. we do a uh, scallop watermelon sashimi we do we do frog legs we have uh, we have a variety of pizzas you know um, we also do uh, Oh my goodness, you know, we do a very high-end cut of steak. Uh, we do, we do have shrimp dishes, we have uh, pasta. You know, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's pub grub with a twist, you know. How did this start for you? Oh, wow, I've been, it started with my grandmother, actually. You know, just hanging out in the kitchen with my grandmother. That's where it really started from, like, the passion came from, like, just watching her like prepare all the family meals during like the holidays and things of this nature. And just hanging out with her when she made cakes, I got a chance to lick the bowl from the icing and the batter and things like that. So yeah, that's where it really stemmed from. It came from her. What's your favorite dish to make? Ah uh, man, I would have to say shrimp and grits. Uh, I wish I could taste your shrimp and grits because that's, I just had, believe it or not, I just had shrimp and grits for the first time a couple of years ago. Really, where were I, you? I was in New Orleans, so okay. I had to. Okay. And All it was right. delicious. Right. Cool. Since then, I've tried it a couple different places. So, yeah. you know, I'd like to consider myself, you well, know. How long are you going to be in town? Not long. Only a couple more hours. Oh, wow. I mean, till, till tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. You, see, yeah, you might come by and have shrimp and grits in the morning. That might be where I can make that happen for you. 6 a.m. Ooh, I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're headed to Louisiana tomorrow. It's going oh, wow. to be a nice, hot, soupy day. We're gonna oh, have some yeah, fun tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be hot. Yeah, Y'all traveling that way, yeah, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be a hot road trip. So I am sure when it comes to cooking that you have that you have had things that come easily and some things that you've had to learn. Um, yeah. you have any cooking fail to share with us? Oh man, I've had flops, man. Um you know, usually my flops come when I step out outside my comfort zone. You know, you as a chef you try to like kinda like push yourself. But then sometimes pushing yourself can be also a failure. You know what I mean? Like you can push yourself just a little too much. And uh, yeah, I've experienced some of those things. You know, uh, I can elaborate on some things. Like I did a dish with a, uh, it was it was a pork trotter, you know? Um, pretty much it was a pig's food. And I thought I could actually take this, this, this dish and make it something that people would enjoy and it didn't pan out that way. You know, uh, I got a lot of bad criticism from that dish. But, um, you know, you learn your lesson. I know i would never do that again. You know, maybe I could try a different execution that might make it work better, but nah, it was it was, it was was a bomb. It really was a bomb. What a do dud, think, actually. Yeah. yeah? Where do you think you got your, your best work experience? How long have you been here at Nova? I've been here almost four years. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say it actually here I got my best work experience because, you know, the, the partners here allow me to create my own food you know they you know they it's like you know we create a stage and you perform and um so that's i would have to say here yeah here what have you learned about yourself i've learned i actually learned to think that i'm a pretty good cook man you know sometimes you kind of question yourself you know you really kind of say ah am i really good at what i do it don't matter how many years you've been doing it you know you really start to wonder am i really actually good at this you know and uh and I actually have to say, over the past, well, I've been here almost four years, but over the past six years, I actually 
develop a little bit more confidence in myself and say, you know what, I'm pretty good at this and I don't know nothing else to do with myself. You know, so might as well try to be good at it, right? For people who have those doubts and they struggle like confidence wise, what kind of advice would you have for them on that? I would say never give up, man. Like I mean, if you really feel it in your heart that you can actually obtain some happiness from doing what you do, continue at it. You know? Don't don't uh, don't turn the other cheek, you know what I'm saying? Like really like go at it, you know, because obviously you're there for a reason. You know, you 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 took this on to you took it on for a reason. I can't really explain like going through like, you know, the, the motions of it, but you took it on for a reason. So if you really truly wholeheartedly believe that you can actually find joy in what you do, it keeps swinging at it, man. You know? How can people contact you? Oh wow! I mean, you can catch me on social media. I'm I'm I'm, I'm pretty frequent on social media, you know. Instagram, You're on Facebook. You're on, on Facebook, Facebook, so we'll we'll make you a part of our private group too, yeah, so they yeah. can reach out to you there. That'd be cool. I would like that. Yeah. I think a lot of people have a passion for cooking and really just don't kind of know how to take it to the next level. Yeah, you know, cooking is one of those things that's funny because a lot of people worry about what the other person may think. In which you have to have that that opinion from other people because I mean you if you're cooking for yourself you think you're like you know you you think you're whipping it up you really think you're doing it you know until like other people try it then that's when the that's when the the discomfort comes in place where it's like okay what are you're they afraid you're going to be judged exactly you know what I mean and so but um yeah 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 that's 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 the hurtful part of it. you know what I think is amazing though about people who cook is that really you are not just creating a, a dish and a meal which obviously you are but many times you're creating moments memories experiences yeah, you create like a celebrations story. Yeah, you know yeah, i mean yeah. it could be an anniversary or it could be a wedding it could be yeah. a first date you're telling a story you know you really are you know you, you really you definitely are telling the story i mean that's like you know me being from south carolina you know we're very uh we take food very seriously, you know, in South Carolina, just like Louisiana, you know, you have certain places have a strong cooking culture, you know, like, you know, it's like, this is our food, this is what we do. And so you see people like just overly excited about cooking the simplest things, you know, like, like cooking rice, you know, cooking beans, you know what I mean? Because they are really, they're very much into the, the cooking culture, you know, aspects of where they come from, you know, so yeah. And the history and, and the history. What do you, you think know? you're providing here in Dallas? I, I would say I'm, I'm creating a, a different experience. You know, a lot of our patrons come here, you know, and and I serve them dishes that like, you know, like from home and 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 they're like, I never heard of this in my life, you know, or some people say I never ate this before. I'm like, like what? Which dish? Oh man, like uh, like I have a dish currently on the menu with millet, which a lot of people are not familiar with millet, you know, but millet I'm not is, familiar with millet. Yeah, millet is, is it a, fish? No, millet is actually a grain, you know, and uh, some people call it bird food, <laughs> um, but uh, but it can be consumed by humans, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I've used millet in dishes, and, and you know, it's just pretty much like taking food that people use in their ordinary daily lives in places like South Carolina. But millet is more like a Caribbean, but South Carolina has a strong Caribbean influence due to you know things as far as you know the the, the transition of cultures. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, like the millet is one dish. Like I had one customer, like he was like, I never ate collard greens before. And he was like, I love the collard greens. He's like, my mom made collard greens and they were terrible, you know? And uh, and it's, it's just good to have people kind of like open up, you know what I'm saying? And say, well, you know what? I never had this before. I didn't like this growing up, but now I like it because your preparation of it. So that's pretty, it's pretty Huge awesome. compliment. It is, it, it really is, you know, so, yeah. Because you know they're thinking, this is how it was supposed to be cooked. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's that's what's in their mind. It's like, you know, why is this not like cooked to death? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I didn't have it like this growing up. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I can definitely feel your passion for everything that you're about with food, cooking, yeah. people, yeah. everything that you can provide a place like Nova, a place like Dallas, a place like, you know, a table for two. It's, it's nothing, I mean, I'll be honest, with you, I get, it gives me goosebumps to see people actually enjoying them. You know, it really does, man, because, you know, because you're putting, you putting, you're putting a lot into it, you know. You know, you're working in a hot kitchen, kitchens are not comfortable. 
you know. Cooking is not easy. It's, it's, not it's easy. hard work. It's hard. It's work. hard on your body. It is. It is. Trust me. I I feel it every morning. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's why I do what I do. You know? Thank you so much for meeting with us today, Thank Eric. You. Thank y'all for having me. Great. Yeah. It was great meeting you too. And I talk to you, 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 and we love, we love, and we hate, we hate, and we chat and much straight. We try to relate. This is my breakthrough. Whoa. Said now this my breakthrough. Whoa. Oh man, this my breakthrough.